Today I wanna to talk about some challenges I've been having with Matter devices and something I did to fix them and something you should do before you consider getting any new Matter devices. Matter is the new smart home standard that's supposed to make getting and setting up and maintaining smart home tech super easy because you just look for the Matter label on the box and it just works. That's at least the idea. And even if you're all into Apple smart home tech today, it's nice that that device has the flexibility to work with other smart home platforms. Maybe for yourself, if you decide to set up other smart home platforms like Google or Amazon down the road, or for someone else, let's say, who moves into your place, they could take advantage of smart home tech that you left behind there, even if they're not as into Apple smart home tech as you are. But one of the key technologies behind behind matter is IPv6. And you wanna be sure that IPv6 is turned on on your network if it's not already before setting up matter devices. And stay tuned for later in the video where future Eric tells you about a problem he had while fixing this smart home problem. And to understand and use smart home tech, you shouldn't have to also understand and know about IPv6. And that's initially why I was really opposed to the idea of saying, well, you need IPv6 to get this working because the whole point of matter is you should just see a label in the store for matter and know that that's gonna work in your smart home. Now, without having to understand all the details of IPv6, basically it's a new way for devices on your network and on the internet more broadly to get a unique address. Because just like if I wanna send you a letter in the mail, I need your unique address of where you live so that the postal systems can get the letter there. In the same way, if my HomePod wants to talk to a smart bulb, it needs to know some kind of address to get there. Now that's oversimplifying a lot of details about how computer networks work, but you kind of get the idea. And for a long time, people were using a standard called IPv4 for this. And then the new standard is IPv6. I don't know whatever happened to IPv5. And IPv6 can handle a lot more uh, connected devices and there's other benefits, but I don't really care about those right now. I just want to get my smart home and your smart home working with matter. And there are a few things you need to consider in your smart home before just turning on IPv6. Otherwise you might break some stuff unintentionally. The first is of course, your internet service provider needs to support IPv6. Now, if you're in the United States and have one of the major internet service providers, chances are they probably already do. And chances are in a lot of the world, you might already have IPv6 turned on even sometimes by default, meaning it's just out of the box, you set up your connection and it's on IPv6. The second thing is to Google and check to make sure that your wireless router and other home network hardware can support IPv6. Pretty much all of them do, and there's just an option in settings to have it on or not, so uh, you'll just need to make sure that that works. But before you actually turn it on, if you work remote for a company that you use like a corporate VPN to connect to their services, you wanna check with your IT department to see if IPv6 is supported. I actually had some issues there where most of the VPN worked fine, but there were a few old legacy systems that were expecting me to be coming from an IPv4 address. And then there's some, some ways I got around that with basically using the VPN in a different way, but you may or may not have to get creative or depending on your job, maybe you have to sit out a lot of this matter stuff until your employer can fully support IPv6. So once you have your network on IPv6, then you just need to scan and the matter device code just like a home kit device code and go through the setup process in the company's app or uh, maybe in the home app although it's really best to set these devices up in my experience with the company's app because there might be firmware updates you want to get to the device and the easiest way to do that is to use the company's particular app for setting up the device. And fun fact, if you use Thread for your smart home for any devices, Thread already uses IPv6 internally to communicate. But of course, you can have an IPv4 network with your Wi-Fi and Ethernet devices, and it can still talk to an IPv6 Thread network because the Thread network is in a lot of ways separate from your internet and Wi-Fi Ethernet network in your home. 
So I had a few problems after I converted my network to IPv6, and most of it was just HomeKit devices becoming unresponsive. So I think if I were to do it over again, after I converted my network, I'd also just go ahead and restart all my HomePods and Apple TVs and unplug and replug in any Wi-Fi connected devices because those are the ones that'll be affected by this connection change. So all my Wi-Fi smart plugs, unplug them, plug them back in, and then they work fine. And then the other thing I had to do was reset a bunch of my Sonos speakers. I was really surprised after converting to IPv6, my HomePods were actually much more reliable doing multi-room airplay than my Sono speakers were doing multi-room audio. But then after resetting my Sono speakers, everything seems to be back to normal. So that issue went away, but I would just say, keep in mind, it's a good idea if you make this kind of a big change in your network, just to reboot everything, it really does help. There's a reason it's a joke to restart your devices as being just this common advice. It's because it just resets a lot of the state of the software running on these devices. And in this case, um, hopefully helps work out any bugs around network connection issues. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you found it helpful, it helps support the channel. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.